An icon is difficult to reimagine or replace and very tough to improve on. Tough, but not impossible. In just over half a century, we've had four generations of the mighty Range Rover, a car that stands for many things, chief amongst them being capability and off late, luxury. Now it's time to make way for the new fifth generation Rangey and I am in California to drive it. A vast number of Range Rover drivers live and drive here which is why we are in wine country just north of San Francisco. Lots of pressure on Land Rover design to get the look and the styling just right. Now that's true for any model but when you talk about the flagship well, that pressure kind of doubles because remember, you're talking about a legion of faithful buyers, big fans of the brand who don't really want you to mess it up. They don't really want you to also sometimes change anything. They love the existing car. So you've got to balance expectations, both in terms of going new, progressive and modern and also maintaining what is typically Range Rover. That's what you see on this car. The adaptive front lighting with bending light tech and maneuvering lights is a first for the Range Rover. They work in conjunction with the 3D surround camera and the car's self-parking capability, which is remotely possible through a phone app, even when you are outside the car. Range Rovers always had the split tailgate and for decades, owners have been using them to sit on. Yes, I have done it before too and I can tell you, this is something that's not going to surprise you, but it's the little addition of the seat cushion and what's being called the tailgate event suite. So it's not just that, that it gets a little more comfortable for the backrest and uh, for the posterior. It's also that you have speakers installed up here in the tailgate and lights as well. So if you're out camping, it's dark, you can use the lights. And uh, of course, you can listen to your music while gazing at the stars. So that new feature will give you a good hint at how the car is amping up the luxury quotient. Yes, the Rolls-Royce Cullinan has seats on the tailgate too, and that is a familiar theme all around this new generation. It has got more swish than before. Yes, that was possible, just imagine. The car has power-assisted doors which help the user to open and shut them, and they also have the soft touch feature. In fact, they even have hazard detection, so they'll stop if they detect an obstruction. Brand new tech interface, you expect that these days. And I have to say that Land Rover has delivered. The flagship certainly seems worthy uh, as being the model that brings in the latest from uh, Land Rover's PV platform. You've got a huge amount of uh, touch screens and, and lots of digital displays all around the car. Here you get a 13.1 inch touch screen, new graphics, completely new look, and uh, you've got lots of functionality and features that you know and you expect, but uh, there's also new stuff that's been added in like Alexa and lots of different music interfaces like uh, the Spotify platform that's been built in. That is nice. And then you've also got a 13.7 inch screen here. It is the digital interactive driver display. It gives you what you expect, of course, in terms of all the information. You've also got head up display that kind of adds to it. It just makes the overall experience a lot sharper and gives you the relevant information you need. And you can customize some of those displays as you would expect. But there's so much more to tell you about everything in the screen. So a quick little insight now on all the tech that's been added to the new fifth generation. Alexa integration works with AI capability, so the system is self-learning and improves its functionality over time. Alexa, what's the temperature? Right now, it's 60 degrees Fahrenheit. You can seamlessly get weather or news or even check your calendar all through voice commands and control. There's also wireless Apple CarPlay or Android Auto and wireless charging for smartphones. The car's many chips that run various systems have an over-the-air update facility. We're talking about over 70 electronic modules that can keep updating and improving over the years. That 13-inch touchscreen has a floating look and uses curved glass for an added sophistication. 
It also has haptic feedback, which is great. So you don't have to look away from the road as much when accessing or pressing certain functions. The look and feel of the interface is matched in that 13.7 inch digital driver display or instrument cluster. Depending on the spec you get, there can be an 11.4 inch HD touchscreen fixed behind both front seats for the rear passenger's entertainment. There's also an 8 inch touch panel that's integrated into the drop down armrest at the back, which allows rear passengers to manipulate their seat for maximum comfort. It is luxurious back here. You know that you expect that, of course. And the uh, new little party tricks, let's talk about those because that's the stuff that you really want to know. Big screens, lots of infotainment options, all of that is fine. You have a drop down armrest, but now that is automated. The way it comes down, little flick of a button and it folds downwards. You also have the blinds that go up at the touch of a button. You can control that for both sides, of course, from any one side. And, uh, you know, you've got a screen down here which lets you control all the functionality as well. The seats, the blinds, climate control, uh, the lighting options, and uh, then some. Look at this. There's a little cup holder here, as you'd expect in a drop-down armrest. But again, it's a little button that you press uh, or touch on that touch screen, and then it starts to deploy. The seats back here do recline, by the way, of course. You expect that too at this end. But that's not all, because uh, up here on the right side, you also have, and remember, right side for the left-hand drive car, it's going to be the other way around for us. On the seats, you have a little function. Uh, there is a seat away function where you press that, and what it does is it lets you quickly put the seat out, and you also can deploy the uh, drop-down footrest. So it gives you lots of leg room. You've seen that. You've seen that in cars like the S-Class, etc., uh, this is a nice thing to have because obviously it makes things more comfortable, long drives especially. You can recline the seat, put your feet up, sit back, relax, and maybe watch something as well while you're at it. There you go. The cup holder did deploy as well, and it's kind of revealed itself by extending the section forward. When you don't need it, you can just touch that again. It's going to fold back up. And, uh, you know, it's nice to have this captain seat kind of feel, the two individual reclining seats and this big central console over here. But if you do want to have a third passenger, of course, you can put this right back up again. Again, it's just a little touch on that screen and it's going to fold right back up again and reveal to you just how much leg room I now have. That is pretty good and generous. But if you think that's not enough, of course, there are more configurations and more options. Let's talk about those now. The SV version of the car is absolutely ultra luxurious. You get lots of space, it's the long wheelbase, and you've also got all these beautifully customized interiors in terms of color, palette, and materials, but you've also got some exciting features. You know, this is the car for the really well-heeled buyer. So you're used to things like, you know, a little champagne cooler at the back, but guess what? It gets a little fancy on this one because you have not just a fridge, but one that uh, is special. Yeah, there's a little panel that automatically goes down and it reveals the little champagne bottle and the crystal glasses. Close that the same way. It's the same with the uh, cup holders. Nice little flip panel and the cup holders come up. And that's not all. There's also a little table for you to uh, enjoy that sense of luxury. The back also deploys beautifully. Slide that back and open it up for both the passengers to have that little tabletop that is nicely done. It's very well finished and it's extremely luxurious. Just the sheer perfection on the operation of that deployable table tells you how much engineering and finesse has gone into the new Range Rover. The signature suite on the SV lets you choose new materials like ceramics, contrasting color palettes for the front and back, and even new metal or wood inlays for the first time. As you can tell, I could go on. For the first time, the Range Rover also gets the option of a third row. Yes, even I had to remind myself that this option did not exist in the past. Getting in and out is quite easy thanks to an electrically folding second row seat. Space in the back is quite ample. Needless to say, the three-row version 
is only on the longer wheelbase Range Rover. On the whole, the car is loaded with tech. It's definitely even more luxurious, but I suppose that is obvious at first glance, even from the outside, where the emphasis is on being minimalist. It is a huge car, of course, and the space between the front and rear wheels gets even bigger in that longer wheelbase car. The height and width emphasize the car's heft while still maintaining a great proportion. It's a really solid waistline. It gives the car a lot of definition and character and also kind of tells you about its ample size. But the thing that really is going to be appreciated once again, the flush door handles which deploy only when you lock or unlock the car and that's a nice little feature they also have the little button on there so you don't have to use the key fob as long as you have that in your pocket touch the button and out they come now if you think the styling up front is very evolutionary it's at the back where the car is completely new it's a signature of the design really because when you see it you'll know it straight away this is the new range rover you've got this blacked out element that kind of defines this tailgate. I have to say that it makes the car look a little bit narrow and tall, but when it lights up, and that's the part I'm talking about, the tail light, you wonder where it is and there you go. It's, you know, it's kind of concealed into this black element and then you hit it, uh, the brakes and it gets even brighter. And that's the thing that's going to be a really cool sort of feature. A lot of people are going to like it because they call it hidden until lit. It really is that. It's all nice and black. You've also got uh, some horizontal lighting elements up here in this black strip like the indicator and uh, yeah that's a cool new thing and certainly something that will be a defining characteristic of the Range Rover's styling and design language. Now let's drive this. Now with a new generation of the Range Rover there's so much focus on the luxury caution to the car and also everything that has changed or been enhanced and all the technology that you tend to forget that it's also always been a very capable car to drive and not just off-road on the tarmac as well and so that's the part i'm glad to say has been very much kept intact because not only do you get a whole bunch of different powertrain options each one of them is pretty capable when it comes to sporty and exhilarating performance I have begun my drive with the range topping 4.4 litre twin turbo V8 that's sourced from BMW. It is very powerful with 520 bhp of power and a huge 750 Nm of peak torque. The 8 speed automatic gearbox is standard across all engine types. Now you'd expect with the new generation of a Range Rover that you will get terrain response, you'll get the latest generation of it and that does mean of course that the auto function is still very much intact. The good part there is that, uh, you know, it works more intuitively now. And so you don't really have to think about changing the car's setting into the dynamic drive mode if you really want to be able to execute a bit of a dynamic maneuver on say a highway or on a sharp corner. The car responds exactly as you would want it to. And of course, remember that even in eco or in comfort mode, it's not like it's sluggish. It's not like it's not gonna respond. But yes, the auto function has gotten a little bit sharper. Here in the United States, the car will no doubt be petrol only. And there is a smaller 3-litre inline 6 mild hybrid also on offer. But that won't be all globally. Now the good news is you still have the diesel option. I mean, a lot of manufacturers today are sort of moving away from diesel completely and uh, being a flagship of the range here it is good that you get diesel to begin with the fact that it's also a fun diesel to drive and now it also has the mild hybrid that's been married into it just makes the overall experience a lot better and remember that it's not going to stop here because uh, there's already a promise of a bev or battery electric version of the range rover that will come by about 2024. i'm glad i'm getting to drive the diesel even though I'm in the US. The inline six diesel is being offered with 254, 294 and 343 bhp outputs. And India is getting the most powerful iteration. Expect the mild hybrids, both petrol and diesel, 
to make their way into other models from Land Rover. The plug-in hybrid option using the same 3-litre unit on the petrol side will also be shared with cars like the new generation Range Rover Sport that has been shown too. The 3-litre inline 6 engine is new and like I said also gets that 48-volt mild hybrid system. But there are two output versions here also. Once again, I am happy to tell you that India is getting the 392 bhp version. Now the six cylinder is plenty powerful as well and it actually is pretty enjoyable to drive. Interestingly enough, and I can't really explain why, the front end just felt a little bit sharper this morning and the steering has a nice weighted feel. Of course, I do have the car in dynamic for the most part, but I did try it out in comfort too and I still felt the same. And so uh, this is going to be the interesting engine to watch because it also has the mild hybrid on it and it's also going to be the mainstay, I think, in most markets when it comes to sales. Handling on the new Range Rover, as well as the agility and steering control, are the real revelation. This is a big car, as I have said, and so that is definitely something I am watching out for. Now, as cars get bigger with uh, a new generation, the worry always is that uh, that's going to hamper your dynamic side, the, uh, the handling on the vehicle. Good steering, very taut on handling and that's the part that I'm happy to see because of course you have an expectation of that as well when it comes to a Range Rover that it's going to be fun to drive. It doesn't feel as big as it is and uh, I think that is a credit to the engineering department for sure. I did drive the long wheelbase car as well and I'm happy to report it does not feel massively different to the short wheelbase. In India, most buyers will be the chauffeur-driven kind, so expect a lot of offtake for the long wheelbase. And also the Swank SV versions. So at launch, like I said, we're getting the 3-litre diesel and petrol mild hybrids, both in their most powerful avatar, as well as that monster 4.4-litre V8. India should also get the PHEV, that's the plug-in hybrid, in 2023. Trims at the start will be the SE, HSE, Autobiography and First Edition on the long wheelbase. The SV versions will be available in the short wheelbase option. Off-road, the Range Rover will do everything you expect it to. I got a chance to drive through a nice forest trail and the car is fun. It gets a fully independent air suspension, something the Range Rover is known for. The company says it has developed a new in-house proprietary adaptive dynamics control software that works with the suspension and the all-wheel drive for effortless performance in any dynamic situation, including off-roading. It monitors driver inputs, surface information and wheel grip over 100 times per second. It then distributes torque to the front and rear axles as needed. An active locking rear differential is also standard, which optimizes traction during higher speed driving, especially around corners, and enhances grip in wet off-road conditions too. Wading depth on this car is now a massive 900 millimeters, and you can track axle articulation and what lies ahead on the screen using the car's multiple cameras and dynamic output graphics. Coming as it does a decade after the fourth generation, there was a lot of expectation on the new Range Rover. In many ways, that expectation has been met and even surpassed. It is what the buyer would expect. Understated luxury, elegance, instantly recognizable, sophisticated, packed with technology, safety features that include ADAS and so much more. The SV Serenity trim in particular, with its Corinthian bronze highlights, will no doubt be in big demand from buyers in India. Everyone from the Bollywood Brigade to corporate honchos. This is not a car for everyone, and even those who can afford it can then pamper themselves and get the car that truly meets their every need and is customized to their liking. 
In India, we'll get the car in July and pricing will be in the stratosphere, no doubt. But then, as I have been saying, the Range Rover is for the select few by design.